The, the strategic environment has changed dramatically and I think there are two major changes. And the way that I put it is the first major change is that uh, our great and powerful friend, the United States, uh, no longer has the military resources to meet the ex expectations of all its allies. So the US commits itself to being active from the Baltic, through the Mediterranean, through the Atlantic, down into the Gulf, across the Indian Ocean, up through the South China Seas, into the Pacific, into the Atlantic, uh, and all areas between it. At the end of the Cold War, they structured their military, they had been structuring their military, on the basis that they could win simultaneously two big wars uh, and a small war, uh, as I said, simultaneously. That's extraordinary. Mm. They were prepared to pay to have millions in their, in, their, in their defence force, to have 600 ships in their navy, to have an air force second to none. They, they have lost interest in that. <laughs> they, they, have, they are no longer prepared to pay for that. They, the, 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 the discussion in the United States at the moment uh, by those who are interested in military affairs is to the effect, can we win one war? Now, every nation expects what we, what, what we expect. Uh, uh, you know, Malcolm Turnbull, I remember, in his very famous and very successful meeting with President Trump, said that the American military is the centre pole of Australia's defence. If it is, we're in big trouble. Because the American military, after, after uh, uh, 14 years, 15 years of war in the Middle East, eight years of President Obama and seven years of sequestration of arbitrary cutting by Congress, uh, they are not sure they can win one war.